Welcome to Studio 5, an unlikely singing duo, Easter Sunday in the middle of August, and something new from Elias Dummer. Those are three big stories we're excited to share this week, but we're also happy to deliver an amazing countdown of the top five stories from the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are the first two. At number five. God just is a melody. Is Amy Grant. Singer Amy Grant is still recovered from a bike accident and being knocked out for 10 minutes. She was left with a, con with a concussion, but her team says that she's doing well. Now, because of doctor's orders, she is postponing all of her upcoming fall tour dates. If you've already purchased a ticket, it will be honored on the new date. You can see those dates listed now on our website. Number four. What is Lakers basketball without Magic Johnson? After Showtime, we had to try to create our own identity. A new docuseries, Legacy, the true story of the L.A. Lakers, just bounced onto Hulu. And Lakers legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar tells me it's somewhat of an antidote to the fictional HBO series about the Lakers, of which he was not a fan. It's a chance for us to tell our stories. Everybody in the film actually did what happened, what they said that they did or didn't do. It's, uh, there's no fiction in this. Two episodes of Legacy out now with a new one each week. And so begins this week's countdown. This week, we're sitting down with Stephen McWhorter and Jason Claiborne, two music creators from two very different church music cultures. One has a rich black gospel sound. The other has a unique voice in the world of worship. Together, they are amazing, and their sound was born in one of the places where racial unrest made headlines around the world. Their newest release is a sound for the time. It is called Rafa. Your current single, Rafa, how did that happen? What's the, the, what drove it? Man, so much stuff was going on in the world and, and in our churches and, and um, we, and, and in family members and friends of ours lives. Mm -hmm. And man, we just, one day we're just like, man, we need to talk about who God is, is being a healer. In the middle of the dark. We wrote a lyric in the song that says, we're leaning on your power. You'll do what can't be done either now or forever, we know it's going to come. You both have individual testimony. You were addicted to meth, and I think I've heard you describe it as yourself as a wounded preacher's kid. So how do you go from <laughs> wounded preacher's kid to meth addict to worship leader? Right. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, you know, my dad was an evangelist. I grew up watching him preach on Sunday morning and then behind closed doors, I saw him physically abuse my mom. I said, you know what? If God's real, he's not good. And I don't want anything to do with this Jesus guy. So I really quickly just started rebelling. 13, I'm smoking, drinking. 15, it's cocaine and pills and I'm selling drugs. And by the time I'm 17, I'm a full out crystal meth addict. I'm using crystal meth every day for almost six years. And uh, somebody gave me this book uh, been praying for me called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Three o'clock in the morning, uh, I've got drugs on the side table next to me. <laughs> Nobody's playing <laughs> softly in the corner, come as I am, come as you are, or whatever, you that know. Altar call. It's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like seemingly the most improbable place for someone to get saved. And I, I say it's, it's the kindness of a very real God to meet a wounded pastor's kid in a place completely untouched by the hands of man. And in this place, we had like an internal dialogue. I, mean, I didn't audibly hear him, but I knew I was talking to him, you know? Um, he was like, you know, God, I want to give you my life. I want to quit all this addiction, all this darkness I've known for so long. I want to, but I can't. And the thought more powerful than words, I just feel like the Holy Spirit said, you won't do it, I'll do it. Were you a man on the run as well at some point? <laughs> um, no, not my, my story is totally different. Mm -hmm. um, my um, grandmother was a minister of music at her church. My mom was a minister of music. My father was a minister of music. You know, we grew up in church. Um, 
My grandmother was the minister of music for 50 years almost. Uh, God has given me favor and put me around greatness a long time ago, and I didn't realize it as a kid. So what unites you two? Where, what happens that makes you guys say, you know, we should The Lord. We should, the, we should, somebody we called Jesus. We yeah, should make absolutely. albums together. <laughs> right. <laughs> we live really close to each other. We live like 10 minutes. We've, we've known each other for a long time. We're both in Louisville, and uh, we both have been in the this industry, whatever you want to call it, uh, during the pandemic, we're like, hey, let's get together and do something. And we did, and it was so fun. Like, it wasn't work at all. It was like, oh my gosh, I love this. But there were some people going, hey, you know, some people are watching you guys around here and are paying attention to this and uh, wondering what, what God's up to, you know? I mean, so that so, the union literally comes at the height of some tough racial stuff. tension mm -hmm. in Definitely. this country. Not that we thought about seen. it like that, because to be honest with you, this is a very kingdom friendship. It's mm -hmm. not, oh, hey, we should do something because I'm white and you're black. Uh, it's no, it's, man, I love you. Let's do something together. This is fun. And it became that, not because it was what we were intending, right? And, it, and it's us not trying to turn each other into each other. It's us being who we are and allowing God and allowing the truthful conversations to happen. We're able to say, he, he'll call me sometimes like, Jay, I need to get this off my chest. And just have, what a, you just have a conversation. It. And I think that that's what helps build kingdom and what's building the relationship is you're able to listen to my story. You're able to listen to the hardships and the things that I've been through and, and get a understanding of why this is like this and why my culture is like this. And I, and I get an understanding of why your culture is like this, which makes it easier for us to do ministry together. I think genuine love and grace, which those are big words to throw around, but at their core, um, they honor you and they honor each other. And you like with real love and grace, you begin to trust each other. So he can say whatever he wants to me because I know him and I love him and he has grace to do that with me and vice versa. I think the whole idea of the kingdom is this. When we're fixed on the Lord, we're not fixed on each other, right? I mean, it says in when every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, and we'll all sing together to him, holy, holy. And it'll, and it'll all be different tongues, different yeah. nations. There won't be a Kirk Franklin room. <laughs> there won't be a Hillsong room. It'll just be all at once adoring him. And I think with us, we just like, we do it if you like it or not, mm -hmm. you know, it's what God gave us and we, we roll with it and people are, they're grabbing a hold to it. In 2020, these artists recorded choir sessions. They then released a Christmas single that was featured in the Chosen TV series Christmas Special. You can also find Stephen and Jason on albums like Highest Praise in 2021. Still ahead. Ro rodeo. We heard you. Ready? <laughs> Comedian Joe Coy takes us from family feud to family film. My mom is at war with my Tita Teresa, and they don't even know why. Did you really have to wear the same dress as my mom? Oh. I can't help it if I wear it better. This is war. Oops. And it's Easter Sunday in the middle of August. Joe, you play a comedian, you are a comedian. How true to this Easter Sunday story is your life to your character? But you know what? It's all true. Moments like these are few and far between. Let's enjoy it. To have a sex before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me. There's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. Watch Dan and Dale tackle trending topics that test your faith on the next Faith Wire, Monday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. The Global Lane takes you around the world providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on the Global Lane. Thursday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Act number three.
It's a new take on a Disney classic starring Tom Hanks. Pinocchio hits theaters September 8th, and we have a Studio 5 first look. Star light, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. When you wish upon a star. At number two. We felt this in our pocketbooks, in our bank accounts, Democrats, Republicans, independents, everyone across the country. A preview of something new from news anchor and best-selling author Ainsley Earhart. A children's book titled, I'm So Glad You Were Born, and it's being released September 27th. I want children to read this book and just know that God has a plan for their lives and that we are all so glad they were born. Absolutely. Is that a message you heard growing up that you were? I did. Yeah, tell me about that, hearing that. You know, by the grace of God, he has made me a positive person and I am so blessed and I realize that every day. And welcome back to Studio 5. That is going to leave us with just one more story to share in this week's countdown. Right now, it is time for Easter Sunday in the middle of August. This is the latest film from comedian Joe Coy, who plays the role of a comedian who returns home to celebrate Easter with his riotous, bickering, eating, laughing, and loving family. Joseph, are you coming for Easter? I don't know, Mom. I'm really busy. I just mm -hmm. tested for this pilot. You're going to be a pilot? A network pilot for, like, a TV show. Ah, you're playing a pilot on the TV show. No, a lawyer. You could have been a lawyer if you only applied yourself. Joe, you play a comedian. You are a comedian. How true to this Easter Sunday story is your life to your character? You know what? It's all true. It's going to be fun. Easter Sunday is like the Filipino Super Bowl. There he is. There's my Welcome home, bro. See you tonight, okay? I just got here. The embellishment is very minimal in this movie. I mean, there were certain <laughs> scenes where it was just too real. It was just too real, and it was like an out-of-body experience to actually witness these characters come to life. It was it was nuts. Joe Valencia. Yeah. I can't believe it. In a super room yep. at that. What, what happened? You just gave up, huh? <laughs> it's you, Joe. Yeah, it's me. What inspired this project? What made you want to do this? I mean, this was always my goal. Uh, it, I was going to tell this story no matter what, and I was doing it on stage. I mean, I was going to die telling these stories. Like, <laughs> even if it never was made into a movie, I was always going to get this story out there and, and let people hear it, and not only that, relate to it and understand that, you know, funny is funny, is family is family. You're, you're going to get it. Just because I'm Filipino doesn't mean you're not going to understand that that's my mom, and your mom is just <laughs> like my mom. I've literally never seen this many Filipinos in the same place before. We're sending gifts to our family in the Philippines. I'm sending this brand new hair dryer. Wow. If it makes your hair look like that, I wouldn't send it. How dare you? How dare you? We should put them both in the box and ship it. How are you feeling in fear of what mom and those will say? Oh, I, she's gonna love it. My mom is at war with my Tita Teresa, and they don't even know why. You know, she's been in this country for 51 years, and she's never seen anything that looked like her, or sounded like her, or ever seen her family on any screen. You know, and and now you're you're on the biggest screen in the world, and it's being produced by Steven Spielberg. It's like this is a great moment for everybody. Family is a mess. We're counting on you to fix it. Bye. You know, we're, we're gonna get more voices out there and they're all gonna be able to be heard, you know, after this. You know, it, this is a, a great start and, and the doors are opening. Mm, beautiful to see. Uh, at least two of the big themes in there. Faith is certainly a part of it. We're talking about Easter Sunday, but also the idea of family and taking care of each other. How prevalent and important of a story do you think this is? Had to, we had to show the bickering. We had to show everyone getting into a fight with everybody, but when it came down to uh, family, uh, it, 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 you put the fighting to the side and you take care of your family because your family's always going to be there for you. You're going to fight, but blood is thicker than water and you're going to take care of your family no matter what the situation. We're all we got, so let's 
Get the party started, baby! Moments like these are few and far between. Let's enjoy it. Tonight, Here, we'll buckle up. Filipino families fight a lot. Make sure you're not late for dinner. But we love a lot, too. Here we go! Here we go! We got a lot! Where is my money? Here are my ATM cards. My PIN number is 1217. Oh, also is mine. Oh, yeah, ours, my mine too. My, my yeah. Why do you all have the same PIN number? It's Manny Pacquiao's birthday. birthday. Oh, right. The guy who couldn't beat Mayweather. Oh. Oh. Easter Sunday is in theaters right now. Now is also a good time for us to pause for the cause of sharing our weekly story in pictures. Here's this week's Studio 5 snapshot. We head to Hollywood, where award-winning comedian and actor Kenan Thompson reaches a career milestone. He receives his star on the Walk of Fame. The honor came in a ceremony Thursday, with colleagues and fellow Saturday Night Live cast members there to wish him well. His wife, daughters, and other family members were also on hand. And these images are this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Moments away. I'm not what I make. I am who you have made me to be. Award-winning singer and songwriter Elias Dummer. Now checking out your social media, you describe yourself Jesus family words and overthinking. Delivers his much anticipated sophomore solo set. Welcome back to Studio 5. Award-winning singer and songwriter Elias Dumma has delivered his much-anticipated sophomore solo set. It explores the highs and lows of the Christian life with 10 tracks, songs that explore the failings of humanity, but more importantly, they amplify God's amazing grace. We had the chance to speak with him before this project dropped and thought it would be nice to rewind and remember that conversation. Now, checking out your social media, you describe yourself, Jesus, family words, and overthinking? Yeah. What's the overthinking? <laughs> when you write worship songs, you're writing songs that people will one day pray. You're writing songs that people will want, that may one day shape their theology, their view of the world, and all of that. And I, I really feel the weight of that. I'm not who I know. I'm known by the King of all kings. The buzz and the conversation now is around the drop of expectation. It was interesting because we wrote it before the pandemic and everything that came along with it. Um, at my own church, we were going through this season of wrestling. I'm like, okay, we've got folks from all kinds of different places coming together in worship every week. And to what extent are we offering them a call to worship where not only are they encouraged to expect that God can do something in their life here and now, but that they see themselves in the song. Maybe you're coming with childlike wonder and trust and you're in a great position. Or maybe, frankly, you're at the back of the room with your arms crossed and you're, you're not sure why you're there and you're filled with questions and doubt and hurt and all these things. And we all know in the wake of the pandemic that many people are coming to church in exactly that place. I know that if we can stand on our common ground that a real difference can be made in the world in terms of how we treat each other and how we approach the problems of the world. Jesus, my 
you actually write about and, and have studied the scientific benefits of corporate singing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been into kind of science and neuroscience and that kind of stuff for a long time. And one of the things that's really cool about worship in particular is, and I think is often overlooked, is that really singing together, just the machinery of singing together, in some ways accomplishes some of what Jesus says in love the Lord your God, the heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Singing together releases oxytocin in the brain, which is often called the love hormone. So there's this sense in which when we literally sing together, just the machinery alone is a discipleship tool. And I think that's just an incredible thing that we, you know, I, the world ought to know. We do this thing and it matters and it makes a difference. Elias Demma co-wrote his entire new project. It is called The Work, Volume 2, and he co-produced with Brent Milligan, Stephen Curtis Chapman, and Torin Wells. The project is available right now wherever you get your music. Well, we need to take a quick break, but before we do, we have made it to the final story in this week's countdown of the five big, uplifting entertainment headlines. Here is what's finishing on top this week. At number one, the world I knew was quite simple. I didn't know there was such a thing as electricity or that water could come into the house through a pipe. I never thought about what I looked like. I didn't know what a mirror was. It's a first look at a documentary about legendary actor Sidney Poitier, produced by Oprah Winfrey and premiering on Apple TV Plus and in theaters September 23rd. When you grow up in a community where everything you know is powerful and good and it's black, there's no concept of race that defines Sidney Poitier. I left the Bahamas with this sense of myself. And from the time I got off the boat, America began to say to me, you're not who you think you are. I'm a black man in a white There was a habit in Hollywood of utilizing blacks in the most disrespectful ways. And I said, I cannot play that. Simply called Sydney, the film traces his groundbreaking impact on American entertainment and culture and features candid interviews with Denzel Washington, Holly Berry, Robert Redford, Lenny Kravitz, Barbara Streisand, Spike Lee, and many more. It was the first time I had seen a black man assert his power. I'm a giant and I'm surrounded by ants. I wanted to marry Sidney Poitier. He was like, wow, movie stars should be wow. Biggest box office draw, black man, 1967, 68. And the whole country is spiraling around him. We're hanging together by a few cultural threads. And Sidney Poitier is one of those cultural threads. The winner is Sidney Poitier. It's not easy being the first when you have to represent the entire race. Coming up next. You know everything. Our singing brothers from Louisville return with a message and music to move our hearts. Often we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. Welcome back to Studio 5. As you know, music fuels this show each week and today's soundtrack 
comes from the artist who was awarded the most stellar awards at this year's honors. I believe he actually took home six statues. Take a listen and you'll hear why Pastor Mike Jr.'s Amazing is what's playing in my ear this week. On that musical note, we are almost out of time for this week's show. So let's fast forward to share a preview of next week. Let me see down there. Like this? Emmett never thought anything would happen to him. We've shared our Studio 5 first look at the film, Till. We're now taking a deeper dive into this painfully pivotal moment in America's civil rights story. He just wanted to go on vacation and have fun with his cousins. But if my son could just get his feet back onto the Chicago soil, he'd be one happy kid. I don't know why I said that. With a close look at Mamie Till and her fight for justice for her 14-year-old son Emmett, who was beaten and lynched while visiting his cousins in Mississippi. The lynching of my son has shown me that what happens to any of us anywhere in the world had better be the business of us all. Now we hope you'll join us for that story and much more, it's all coming your way next week. Before we say goodbye today though, we've made time for just one more word and we wanna give that to Stephen McWhirter and Jason Claiborne. If you could go back in time and give your younger self some advice, what would you tell him? So what would you tell young Stephen? What would you tell young Jason? It's funny, because I don't know that I would tell him anything because the journey is um, so important, you know? Like the Lord uses everything. He uses it all. And so I think I, I don't think I would tell myself anything. I would say appreciate all the moments and time that you've had and the things that you have been able to do and appreciate those moments instead of trying to work so hard to get mm -hmm. to the next moment. You know, appreciate the time where God has you. You know, I appreciate those moments and enjoy that time and that season until he changes the next season and puts you there. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, Jason. That's a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and for this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you, and then please come right back here and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.